So I was scrolling through YouTube one day and I came across this really cool video of this T-handle in space. I found a really great explanation video by Veritasium, who has an explanation based off Terence Tao's submission to a math forum, one of the greatest mathematicians alive, and I wanted to try to explain it in under three minutes. Okay, to understand this phenomenon, I'm going to first understand a few principles in physics, right? So in the linear world, right, I have a force that can be acting on an object on its center of mass, so it cause the object to rotate around in space like that, right? Now let's move on to the angular world, right? If I have a force that's not applied to the center of mass, or applied somewhere far away from the center of mass, or any deviation from the center of mass, it's going to cause the object to rotate like that, right? So that's going to bring us to the rotating world. So what happens to the linear world? Well, this object, how much does it weigh? Well, it depends on how much mass it has, right? So if we go back to our angular world, mass we don't really care about. We care about the distribution of mass. So a point here and its uh, distance away is going to have a different effect than a point here and its larger distance away from the axis of rotation, right? So um, we, we can define axis of rotations or unique axis of rotation based on unique mass distributions from that axis. I can have an object, like a sphere, right? I can rotate it about this way, turn it 90 degrees, rotate it about that way. It's all the same because it's only one unique rotation, one unique axis of rotation. If I take something like a cylinder, right? So in this case, I have a roll of tape. I can rotate it about this way, or I can rotate about this way. So in this case, if I rotate like that, well, I have, that's pretty stable. I have one axis of rotation. If I rotate about this way, turn it 90 degrees, rotate about this way, turn it 90 degrees, it's all the same. That's my second axis of rotation. Now, third type of object is ones with three axis of rotation. So if I have an axis pointing this way, axis pointing this way, and axis pointing this way. So the first one, imagine that I have, um, look at the mass here versus the mass here. There's a lot more mass farther away on right here and here, right, versus the little mass here. I'll approximate that to having light point masses and heavy point masses, okay? That'll just help us with explanation later on. So if I have a rotation about with just my light, just my light point masses moving, well, it's pretty stable because my light point masses are moving, my heavy point masses are keeping it stable, right? If I rotate about this way, well, guess what? I have my heavy point masses and my light point masses all moving, so that's going to cause it to be pretty stable too. If I rotate about this way, well, in this case, my light point masses are moving, my heavy point masses are, okay? So if I'm rotating this way, what, did you see that? Well, let me try that again, okay? What happened is, as I was spinning around this way, it also rotated about this way. This is because in a, uh, in a rotating body, we have uh, forces known as centri uh, centrifugal forces that appear. It does not appear in linear forces, uh, linear rotations, but in linear uh, moving bodies, right? In this case, you have heavy point masses away from the axis, and it uh, has its own centrifugal force depending on the distance away from the axis. In this case, it doesn't change because it's just rotating about that axis, right? Well, what happens if I slightly deviate that off this axis this way, right? That slight deviation is going to cause the light point masses, which still have mass, and it's going to have its own uh, centrifugal force depending on its distance, and it's going to accelerate, accelerate, it's going to have more and more until at this point. It still has momentum, so it's going to keep on rotating this way, but the centrifugal force is still going to be upwards this way, so it's going to slow down. So it's going to be kind of like fast and then slow. So it causes, as this object is moving, it's going to cause the object to also rotate this way. Hopefully that makes sense. 